Growers often wonder uh, how plant hormones can affect cannabis plants. Well, here we're going to look at a scientific study that's the impact of the plant growth regulator NAA on cannabis. All right, let's get into the study here. So first off, the two hormones, NAA and BAP, are the ones that were studied. NAA is synthetic, meaning it does not occur naturally, plant hormone in the auxin family. So we're going to see kind of how auxins uh, impact cannabis plant growth. This auxin family can also be toxic at high concentrations to plants. Uh, concentration in dose is very important. The common ingredient with many plant rooting natural horticultural uh, products there. So a lot of them say, oh, naturally occurring in auxins. Well, this one is a synthetically produced, but it is in the auxin family, which is a naturally occurring plant hormone. Now, BAP is the first generation synthetic cytokinin, another plant hormone, that causes plant growth and development responses such as setting blossoms and stimulating cell division. It is an inhibitory of respiratory kinase in plants and increases post-harvest life in green vegetables. We can see the examples of those hormones here. Both of these were done in an exact study on cannabis. If you're wondering what that study was, and some of them may be more of the specifics, here's the proper citation. Here's kind of that first page there for you're welcome to go research it, take a look at it, and look at it in more detail. However, what they basically found, I'm going to provide kind of that general summary here, uh, we're looking at mean plant height. So when we're looking at our two graphs here, the control is the solid line uh, in both, and then the lighter or dashed line is the different um, hormones. Human A is the auxin family, BAP is in the cytokinin family. So in these graphs, we're looking at the mean plant height over all three tested genotypes. Uh, the NA is number of in graph A up here, and BAP is in the graph B down here. Here. The means covered uh, with at least one identical lowercase letter did not have a significant difference at a p-value of 0.05. The arrows show the period 60 to 90 days uh, during which applications took place. So we could see the application made here around day 6 and then another application made here around day 90. And we're seeing the changes that occur over time. Overall, uh, days after planting, uh, the plant height is going to be taller in the control, which is basically the non-treated plant, compared to the one that had the um, auxin family hormone applied. And here, the control also ended up mean plant height was taller uh, compared to the one uh, with had the cytokinins applied to it. And again, these are all significantly different, and we can see that throughout the growth cycle here. Now, the number of internodes, so as we're looking at kind of counting the internodes, the mean number of internodes per axillary branch over two tested genotypes, and you can look at the study for more information on that, means covered with at least one identical lowercase letter, did not offer significance, again, that p-value of 0.05. The arrows show the time at point six days after planting in the, of the first application and treated with uh, the auxin and the cytokinin respectively. Here we're looking at the number of internodes. We kind of see a similar pattern, the control having more internodes than the auxin family hormone or the cytokinin family hormone. That's basically true shortly after pollination, I'm sorry, shortly after application, they were both applied and then we see that separation after that point. Then the mean number of axillary branches. We're looking at the branching point now of the cannabis. Uh, in centimeters over the three tested genotypes with our same two hormones being studied. Again, uh, same statistics applied, P greater than 0.05 is in different letters. The error shows the same point six days uh, after planting for the first application. And again, here we see a large difference of the control compared to the auxin family. Uh, length of axillary branches much longer in the control compared to those with that were applied with the auxin. We see a similar difference in most cases with the cytokinin applied, but a generally a similar trend, even though it is reduced in length of axillary branches with the cytokinin applied one. Now, PGRs are important for cannabis uh, sativa. So the results of this study showed that this extra, uh, uh, these exteriorly applied plant growth regulators, abbreviated PGRs, mainly NA and uh, BAP, had significant impacts on the plant architecture of this cannabis sativa. Both of these PGRs led to more complex 
compact plant morphology. So that might be advantageous because the plants didn't grow more. Doesn't mean that's necessarily uh, what growers are looking for. The use of NAA led to more compact plant architecture with a consistently high inflorescence yield for the, for the particular genotype that they studied. Uh, CBD or cannabidiol uh, content was not affected in these. So again, good to see what was affected morph morphologically, but not affected on the um, cannabinoid uh, produced. Now keep in mind a word of caution here that there's no approved PGRs. So in the cultivation of medicinal grade cannabis uh, production, there are currently no approved PGRs to modify plant architecture. This study was merely just showing that. The use of PGRs in production under good manufacturing practice, typically abbreviated GMP, or good agriculture and collection practice, GACP, guidelines are not clearly defined. So any products applied to the plants should be documented uh, for sure there. Um, again, there's different rules, always uh, laws and changing, but definitely document it. As of right now, there's no approved PGRs for cannabis applications. So if we're looking at kind of our uh, kind of uh, important for that plant morphology. It is important to note that the use of PGRs did not reduce the biomass yield in the content of cannabinoids. The goal is to reduce small compact plants intended for indoor growing environments. The example here I have potentially for like a grow tent or something that might be sealing in generally uh, size limited. The NAA produced a short habit plant, reduced the number of internodes in significant the shortest axillary side branches. So that's the effects of applying that oxygen family hormone. The cytokinin-based uh, family of hormones, BAP, created that short, shorter habit, reduced number of internodes, and shorter axillary side branches. So it's just important to note that both of these created that more compact plant, which might be advantageous for some growers. Now the degradation, so synthetic IAs, which are endol acetic acid, are more stable than the ones applied uh, and, and generously, which are the ones produced in the plant and are degraded at a slower rate. So when we're looking or considering plant hormones, we want to consider the fact that they are going to be broken down. Now, is it going to be a really rapid, kind of quick exponential decay here? Is it going to be a slower, more linear form? That could be dependent on the exact hormone, dependent on the condition, depending on a lot of environmental factors um, as well. So again, important to take into consideration. You want to know the application and the concentration. So with all hormones, when using synthetic PGRs, it's very important to know the exact, uh, exactly the appropriate application method and also the concentrations to avoid potential negative impact on the final product. As I mentioned, one of these was an auxin family hormone. Well, certain auxin family hormones applied at the right levels, high levels, can actually be herbicides or basically kill plants, uh, like 2,4-D falls into that ca category. It's important to know with IAs, it's a high concentration are toxic and utilized as an herbicide, and that would be that 2,4-D. So again, a little can be good, but a lot can potentially kill the plant. So just good uh, practices for growers to know the application, know the right concentration, look at scientific studies like the one presented here in detail to make sure you're getting all those correct so you're getting the potential benefits that you're seeking without any of the potential negative side effects.